Welcome to the Meat and Potatoes podcast. We're here with Felicia Maxfield Barrett, who is the president and CEO of Utah Global Diplomacy. Uh, there was a small little technical glitch that uh, took out about 45 seconds, so we will join this interview in progress. When you meet somebody and you have a common interest, you know, in our case, it's, it's usually a business interest, and you shake hands and you sit down together and you start exploring ideas and best practices and resources, then all of a sudden you have that personal connection, you have that friend from around the world. And then what happens is when something big is going on in the world, it's not that you are excluded from that. Mm -hmm. you, your mind immediately goes to, oh my gosh, I wonder what happened to so-and-so because I know that they're from there. It brings the globe to Utah in the most personal way where we actually are creating empathy. And, you know, empathy is really, it's its the, the special sauce of, of being able to have some global peace, which we desperately need right now. Yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> um my experience with the, the handshakes are because when I interact, it's uh, usually 10 to 12 folks mm -hmm. and that they're from eight to nine different mm -hmm. countries, right? Yeah. Um, and some of the handshakes are firm. Some of them are a little soft <laughs> and some people look you in the eye, some don't. Uh -huh. So right out of the gate, like you're building something, right? And then we, yes. we sit down for an hour and a half, two hours, explain what Silicon Slopes is and then just listen to them. And... Uh, hear their stories. A lot of them are trying to do similar things. Mm -hmm. um, and then, you know, they'll just kind of pick brains and then take pictures. But so it's a really small, fun snapshot. But if you do it enough, and they always leave their business cards, right? Mm -hmm. um, and so I've got all of those. And it's a good United Nations little group of business cards, right? Yeah. Uh, but you spend a lot more time with them and the hosts spend a lot more time with them. Um, but it is kind of fun to just hear their 10, 15 minute elevator pitch. Mm -hmm. And then you have a billion more questions, um, but you don't have enough time. Yes. Yeah. Um, but you're like, man, they've, and they're always like pretty tired, right? Because they've traveled halfway across the world and they're, yeah. um, English is usually not their first language. So they're working hard all day. Mm -hmm. um, but they're obviously trying to improve and better their position in their country. Mm -hmm. So I find the whole thing quite fun. Mm -hmm. I don't know if that's part of the purpose, but it is rewarding. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, it, the most simple thing is is it's fun. It's yeah. fun to engage with each other. Um, one of the things that we do, though, is we're always interested in if we're planting the seeds today, so you meet with a delegation and you sit down and you're exploring different ideas, you're talking about what Silicon Slopes does, what we do afterwards is we follow up with every delegate that comes to the U.S. through to, to Utah through these programs. And I think it's really important for people to know when we say delegate, what that means is it could be a business owner, a nonprofit leader, a government official, non, a faith leader, teacher, journalist. And they're in their mid to high level careers and – you know, they are projects of the, the U.S. Department of State, their um, Education and Cultural Affairs Initiative. And what happens is when they're meeting so many people across the United States and then here in Utah, they're picking up little bits and pieces, right? And, you know, if you've ever traveled, it's intense and you're like, okay, I'm just going to take it all in right now. And mm -hmm. then what happens is when they go back to their country and they put down their suitcases and they have time to take a breath and say, what an incredible experience. What did I learn? And then they start processing it. That's where we come in and we follow up with all of our delegates ongoing. We've been doing this since 2016 to say, what are you working on? And does anything that you're working on relate to your experience in Utah? And we get these incredible stories back where they say Utah's the most amazing state. The people are so kind. The, the landscape is so beautiful. Like really great marketing tools for us, right? Yeah. But then as we start dissecting, okay, what are you working on and how did it relate to your experience here in Utah? We start pulling out these really interesting themes. Um, so we know, and, and then, so my background is anthropology. I love listening to people's stories. I think that, that it's the easiest 
best way for us to create a common humanity, right? And then through qualitative analysis, we start dissecting these themes that we're hearing. And what it's establishing is the delegates are changing laws and policies that they saw and learned about here in Utah. Um, they're building up their professional resources and capacities based off of best practices that they learned here. They're getting more involved in their own community through volunteerism and philanthropy, uh, you know, and that it's dispelling negative stereotypes about who Americans are. So, you know, access to Americans in a lot of these countries are what am I seeing on social media and what am I seeing in the news and movies, which we all know is completely distorted and not true. And then they come here and they said, they say, you know, I was nervous or I was scared to come here until I actually met people and I realized that I was completely wrong. Mm -hmm. Like that's so incredibly impactful, right? Yeah. Um, and so we know that these meetings, and they're simple, right? Yeah. An hour, hour and a half where you're just talking about what you do for a business has such incredible global impact around the world that is truly changing communities. And I have like a ton of stories to be able to talk about that. But what we also know from our study is that there are impacts um, here on the local community. We, we learn more about different cultures and different countries. Um, we have a sense of global citizenship, uh, you know, and, and it does go on to create business partnerships from around the world that that businesses that are meeting with our delegates are create are saying oh there's an industry leader in a country that I've always wanted to work in so as I'm expanding my country internationally I've got a connection there yeah and for a lot of these folks um they're drinking from a from a fire hydrant but oh, yes. uh it's nice to hear you say that there's like follow follow up and feedback right because mm -hmm. you got to go home and process it all and reread your notes and all of that. Um, for a lot of them, it's easier to apply where they live and what they do mm -hmm. um, because it is nascent or it's like a green field. Mm -hmm. um, others, it's like, um, oh, there's 700 million layers of bureauc bureaucratic yes. tape. Um, but, you know, sometimes like I'm like, oh, you're in a much better position to do what we do where you're from mm -hmm. um, because you can just go. You don't have to worry about a lot of the things. Mm -hmm. um, one of the things I constantly find myself is like um, I have a pretty good understanding of the people after a while of, oh, you're in government and you, you keep saying government too much. Maybe you should just... Uh, try and mitigate that a little bit and work with entrepreneurs because they'll go at, at different speeds and they're like, oh, that is true, isn't it? Yes. Yeah, so the, even just like little tidbits there. Mm -hmm. um, but it's great that there, again, that there is that follow-up and uh, kind of how did it go two years after the fact or mm -hmm. whatever it is because it's not like you just went to uh, France on your honeymoon, right? Like mm -hmm. there's an objective for these people that mm -hmm. travel and all of that. So 60 years, mm -hmm. long time. Um a lot of other groups have started and puttered out mm -hmm. uh, over that same period. What makes it so that you guys have been successful for that long? Yeah, yeah, that is a really good question. Um, you know, in the excitement of the recent announcement of Salt Lake City getting the 2034 Olympics, we are so excited about that. And, you know, we definitely saw that back in 2002 with the last Winter Olympics. Um, that people get to engage with the world, right? There, There is just something about that draw of international communities coming here. We, you know, we get to engage with them. We get to learn from them. We get to, you know, experience their culture and their language. Um, and so we know that here in Utah, there is this natural draw into international relations. So you couple the Olympics with the fact that we speak 120 different languages here, um, that we've got five national uh, parks and numerous other tourist destinations. And then you look at all of the different religious groups sending people into missions from around the world you know, all of these components, we're already a naturally globally curious yeah. group of individuals. So yes, the Olympics are amazing and we're excited about that, but we have been doing this 
global people to people connections for so much earlier than that. And I think it's, you know, to give you the most simple answer, it's the people. The people are the the special sauce in being able to say, I want to meet people. I want to host them. I want to sit down and pick their brains and learn about what's going on. I want to share what we're doing here. The reason we've been successful is because of the people of Utah saying, yes, we value what it is that you're doing for our state. And that is that global connection. Yeah, because it's beneficial <clears throat> at the most bottom level again, it's fun and you get to meet new people and have new experiences. And, Mm -hmm. and, uh, as it grows from that bottom baseline level, it could benefit everyone economically too, right? Mm -hmm. You meet some people and, um, there's some really cool products and or ideas. You're like, man, that might work in Midvale, Utah. Uh And, uh, turns out through that friendship and connection, you got somebody that can help. Uh And, uh, again, this is what I think would happen. Um, and there's lots of stories that I've heard over the years of, I met this guy traveling and, uh, liked what they were doing over there and thought we could try it here. Mm -hmm. Whether it's 50, 50 or 60, 40, like everyone benefits economically, Yeah. but also the economic stimulus of, you know, having all these people here Mm -hmm. constantly, Mm -hmm. the hotels, the, the travel, all of that. Like there's, if you're only at worried about money like you guys still do a good job there of like stimulating the economy Mm -hmm. yeah yeah um so the two layers of that are yes you know we as being a nonprofit organization um because we're bringing in all of these people and in a year a typical year uh it's around 400 people it's about 125 different countries um And a combination, you know, accumulation of how many days they stay in Utah is a little over 2,000 days, you know. And so when the individuals are coming here, they are flying in into our airport. They're staying in hotels. They're using transportation. They're eating at restaurants. They're buying souvenirs. And so it's not, you know, for us as an organization, we contribute about $1.3 million to Utah's economy, which is crazy, unheard of for any nonprofit. Um, but then when those seeds are planted, there there is an economic development for businesses here in Utah. And, and an example is we just hosted a delegation, um, you know, for security reasons, we can't necessarily say what country they were from, but it was entrepreneurs from this country looking for opportunities to work with businesses here and develop partnerships so that Utah businesses can go into their country and start working. And the delegates that were here ranged from, you know, we had one guy who was in tech. uh, We had another guy who was doing cryptocurrency. We had a woman who was doing crafts, um, but, but crafts on a massive scale in our country, right? And so they were looking at how do we connect not knowing what the resources are. So that's the value of our organization is we are that connector organization. We are that connector in the community. And since we've been doing this for 60 years, we know a lot of people. And so when they're here, you know, we have the formal meetings that take place. But then in addition to that, we can say, well, what are your real interests? And then who is it that I can get on the phone today and say, hey, do you mind having coffee with this person, you know, and in, during the evening? Do you mind going to dinner with them so you can talk a little bit more about the work that they do? Because what we really see is that there are some firm partnerships that can evolve from bringing these delegates to Utah. Yeah. Um, and it's nice that it's structured, but it's probably fun for you to watch when it's unstructured and it happens organically, yes. right? Yes. Yeah. hundred percent. Just give, all right, here's the framework and here's the road. Yeah. See what you do with it. Yeah. Because people will find those solutions and they will form those friendships that just kind of come a little bit more natural. Mm-hmm. Yep. Absolutely. And I've always enjoyed, right? Like the main goal when they're visiting America in this example is what you guys do, but there's also like groups again, and you know, 10 to 12 folks, um, that if you look at the headlines over the last 50 years, their countries didn't get along sometimes, or there's friction. Um, but that really doesn't exist in these groups when, you know, everyone's talking mm-hmm. about stuff that has nothing to do with like geopolitics mm-hmm. as a little side note, um, where I'm like, yeah, oh, man, 
if everyone could just kind of experience this, there'd mm -hmm. be a little bit less um, acrimony and, and bombs and bullets and things like that. Yeah. It's yeah. tough to scale it. <laughs> yeah. We have had some really tense situations where opposing groups are here together in a peaceful environment, mm -hmm. but then something happens uh, and and it's between those two countries. And so we have to mitigate what that is like and bring it down to the citizen diplomacy aspect. So when you're looking at different types of diplomacy, you know, you have your traditional diplomacy, which is government to government relations. But then you also have soft power diplomacy. And there, you know, this is the fun space where we all like to play in, right? It's yeah. sports diplomacy, it's music, it's arts, um, it's science, it's business. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, so citizen diplomacy being that, uh, you know, people to people connections is the, it's the idea that everybody has the right and the responsibility to shape foreign relations. We do it one handshake at a time. And so that's where we have to, you know, try in our way to say, okay, this is what's going on with your governments, but please keep in mind that just an hour ago you were friends. And yeah. why were you friends? And and remember that. Yeah. Um, I, I also remember, oh gosh, this was probably the most heartbreaking experience that I I personally have had. And that was, we had a delegation from Ukraine here in Utah. They were here for um, LGBTQ issues. And we had to put them on a plane the day that the airports were going to shut down in Ukraine because they were going to be attacked by Russia. Mm -hmm. And, you know, we, we talked to them and we said, you know, do you need to go back? Do you want to go back? Do you want to stay here? You know, we're willing to help you navigate this. And they said, no, we've got to go back because that's where our community is. That's where our family and friends are. You know, we have to go back to our country. Yeah. Um, so there are real implications that happen for people that are coming here to the United States. Um, the other thing is, is, you know, while, while it's fun to sit down and meet each other, you know, one thing that we have to keep in mind is that not all of the countries in the world are allies of the United States. You know, there are some countries that really don't like us. Mm -hmm. And so there's also a security issue in that sometimes we can't talk about certain delegations that are coming in. We can't talk about people because if their governments are finding out that this is taking place, then there are, you know, they could be arrested. Mm -hmm. They could go to education camps. They could be killed, you yeah. know, and we have experienced that through our programs as well. So, um, you know, so we also, while we want to have fun and do, and do all of this amazing work, we also want to acknowledge the fact that there are some very specific security issues that come in. Yeah. Yeah. There's uh, only so much you can do, um, but you guys obviously do well and navigate Thank that. You. Um, for the Utah community, all the way from like um, individual citizens to other nonprofits and uh, corporations, best mm -hmm. way to get involved with y'all? Yeah, so uh, you, you can host our delegates coming in. Uh, that's probably the easiest way to get involved. And it's fun. Our, our delegates are only here for a week to two weeks, so it's not a large commitment. Um, you know, it, like, like exchange students that are here for an entire year. Yeah. Uh, so an example is I've got a group of members of parliament coming in from northern Macedonia in September. We're looking for homestay hosts. Cool. And yeah, and it's very simple. You offer them a bedroom, um, access to a bathroom, you feed them meals, you do cultural activities. And I can guarantee through that experience, you are going to have a lifelong friend from Northern Macedonia. Yeah. Uh, so homestay hosts, host families, uh, if, if you don't have the space or the time or the capacity to do that, you can become a dinner host. And, and it's one of the best things that you can possibly do. Um, and that is, you know, you cook a meal and you open your home to like three to six delegates coming in and you sit down and you just share food and get to know each other. Yeah. And I do it often just because like, I love the work that we do. I'm going on eight years now. And I remember the last delegation I hosted, um, was such a unique experience. We had a gentleman from Sierra Leone there and he's a lawyer. 
And what he does is um, he works to fight against corporations and governments doing land grabs. So because if you own land, you own the land, but you don't own the resources, the the mineral rights. And so, you know, governments come in, they take the land, they don't give any money to the people who own it. And, you know, then the people are homeless. And so he got a call from the president of Sierra Leone saying, I want to meet with you. Like, could you imagine that if the president just called you, Garrett, and was like, I want to meet, <laughs> you're yeah. going, why am I meeting? Yeah. That he said, you know, there's only one of two reasons why I'm meeting this person. Um, it's either because I'm getting an award or I'm going to die. Mm -hmm. And he knew for a matter of fact, it was not the first one. And so, you know, he got his affairs in order. He kissed his wife and his children goodbye, not knowing if he was going to leave. And, um, you know, he got a very stern warning that he needed to back away from government interventions and was, was released. But, you know, I just think about that, like that intensity of the situation is a very humbling yeah. story to hear, right? And now I will always remember him as being, you know, a friend from Sierra Leone. Uh, so the dinners are really impactful. Um, you know, we, a professional resource. If you are a business owner and you are doing something cool in the state of Utah, like contact us and let us know what it is that you're doing. We try to get out in the community and learn about it, but you know, there's so many businesses. Yeah. And uh, so if you're doing something cool, then we would love to know about it so that as we bring these individuals in and we have specific uh, themes or groups coming in that we can you know, contact you and say, hey, are you willing to sit down and just have a conversation about the work that you're doing? Yeah. Um, you know, and then we have other opportunities to get involved with with citizen diplomacy and diplomatic work. Yep. I love it. Yeah, usually when I ask that question, you know, it's 50-50 that there is a chance that people can get involved or help. But with this one, it's like 100%. And it's just yeah. all upside and fun. Like, there's really no reason not to. Right. Um, if you can break bread with a few folks a year from across the world. Right. That's just great times. Right. So, very yeah. cool. Congrats to you and your team. I know uh, it's a moving target, a lot of work. Yeah. Um, appreciate all you, you guys do and appreciate you guys like looping Silicon Slopes into the process over the over the years. We've really enjoyed it. So thank you so much, Felicia. Oh, you're welcome. Yeah, we're so appreciative to Silicon Slopes for, for helping connect us and then also being a, a willing participant in our meetings. So thank you. You bet. Okay.